the darkest day in Christory. That probably brings up a couple of images into your head. Most likely, thoughts about Chris Chan getting arrested while also getting hollered at by Ethan Ralph. I'll never forget waking up that day on August 1st, 2021, and when I got on my computer and logged onto Discord, I saw a message in one of my group chats saying, Big day for Christine. When I asked what Chris did this time and got the answer, I said, No, really, what happened? You know what happened, and if you don't, I've already done a video that covers it called What Happened to Chris Chan Between Catch and Release that you can check out if you really need to. Well, Chris ended up in jail from that point until March 2023, and I've heard people go as far to call that incident the Internet's 9-11. And don't get me wrong, it was definitely a dark day, but I think that there was one day in Christory that was even worse, and if it had never happened, the latter wouldn't have either. That day was September 6th, 2011, just 10 years earlier. But to really get the context of it, we're going to have to go back a bit further in time so we can really grasp what made September 6th the day that it was. Almost a hundred years ago, in fact. From today, not then. Back in the mid-1920s, a couple by the names of Robert Franklin Chandler Sr. and Carrie Edna Wynne had just gotten married to each other, and only 14 months after that, on September 4th, 1927, had their one and only child, Robert Franklin Chandler Jr. But, you're probably more used to hearing him being called Bob Chandler. Growing up in Alabama back in the 1930s, Bob would start a lifelong hobby of collecting stamps in stamp books, as well as joining the Boy Scouts where he would end up being a Scoutmaster for 20 years once he was older. Fast forwarding again to the 1940s and Bob would go to university for an aeronautical engineering major. Unfortunately for Bob, however, this got the attention of the United States Army, and in 1946, they drafted him as a special draftee. Bob would be put into the Signal Corps and sent to Korea for about a year after training to install infrastructure. After Bob got out of the Army, he would eventually go back to school before he would end up working for a company called Western Electric, where he would be an engineer there for about 40 years. While Chris Chan was completely wrong in his belief that Bob invented the 2-liter soda bottle, Bob did create simplified controls for plastic injection molds. Bob would end up working for General Electric up in New York for about three years, but he didn't like it there so he moved back down to the south and ended up finishing his career in Charlottesville, Virginia. Bob throughout the years had created an automated rolling mill for flattening steel and, most importantly, played a noticeable part for the short-lived, yet greatly missed, die-cast casting machines. Die-cast construction. It's a lost art. Bob would also meet a woman named Patricia Haley in 1956 that he would eventually marry and have two children with, named David Allen Chandler and Carol Susan Chandler. Bob and Patricia would eventually separate in 1976 and divorced in 1980, which strained Bob's relationship with both David and Carol. While playing at a pub, Bob would meet a new woman named Barbara Ann, more commonly known as Snorlax after this picture went online. Both Bob and Barb would then get married just a couple of months after Bob's divorce on June 7th, 1980. Only two months into that marriage, and in August, Bob had a heart attack and needed to get a double bypass heart surgery. Everything seemed to be going well for the couple after that, until Bob and Barb both realized that they were about to have a kid. At this point, Bob was 54 years old and Barbara was 40. Medically, and I'm not making this up, is known as a geriatric pregnancy. So, first came love, then came marriage, and as I'm sure you're probably aware, then came Chris Chan in the baby carriage on February 24th, 1982, actually being born as Christopher Weston Chandler. Fast forwarding again to 1986, and Bob and Barb would both sit down Chris in front of the TV, using it as a babysitter, showing him the movie The Adventures of the American Rabbit on repeat. This was probably the biggest mistake that both of them had ever done in their entire lives up to this point. That movie is like Family Guy on steroids when it comes to having no plot, terrible humor, and overall a feeling of being made up on the spot. Chris, at a young age, was shown this movie enough times that he was essentially MK Ultra'd by it for life. 
turning him into what he is today. But this video isn't actually about Chris, so let's move on. The next year, in 1987, Bob would retire and be able to be a full-time parent living off of his pension. This is also when Bob would write a letter to Chris. To Christopher Weston Chandler, from your daddy, started December 26th, 1987. The reason for this open letter to you, which will grow as time goes on, is that I know now, at best, I haven't much time left to share myself with you. Particularly, to share my things, my dreams, and my thoughts with you at a time in the future when you will be able to understand. Remember to use my things and carry on my dreams if you want to. Hopefully, you will grow much older together. I will probably be rambling until I drive you to distraction, but just bear with me, because I will get to the point sooner or later. I hope I have been able to provide for you and your mother until you at least get to college, and for your mother until she joins me at the great sing-along in the sky or wherever. Anyway, I expect you to take care of her, love her, and never disappoint her so long as she lives. I also expect you never disappoint me, because I will always be with you to help you when the going gets tough, and you need me, since everything always seems to happen for the best of me, and when I needed it. I have always felt like my mother was my guardian angel. You look exactly like my mother, and I didn't plan my life. I just took it as it came along. I seem to have no control over it. It always came along with what was right for me. Look at me eight years ago in 1979 when I was really down and out. No friendship from Alan and Carol and ready to cash in my chips with heart problems that I didn't even know about. Your mother, Barbara Ann, helped me through the rough spots and together we had you. Now, I really had something to live for. No better things or events could have happened to me. We have come a long way in the last eight years. Together, we have built a whole new life with an exciting set of dreams. I also expect you to never disappoint yourself. If you think you are at a dead end point at something you are trying to do, just stand back, and if it is meant to be, an answer or break will appear. Just remember, there are many sides to a mountain and many ways to climb it. If you get stopped, back off, regroup, and try another way. If you are still not successful, maybe it is not meant to be. Accept as an experience and go after something else for a while. If it is meant to be, having it on the back burner simmering for a while is not bad, it will pop up again. And the way to attain it will be there. Everything in its time, your mother and I have done our best for you, and in return we expect at least that from you. For yourself and your children, I will be talking about a lot of things in no particular order. I won't always spell words right or have the best sentence structure, but then I am an electric engineer, not an English major. As a matter of fact, English was my worst subject. I'm going to try to write this as if I'm talking to you face to face. Anytime you care to read this, all the physical objects and things I have, we'll talk about. Your mother, Barbara, or your Aunt Harriet will keep for you until you are ready for them. If you don't think you will ever need some of them, or don't want some of them, don't waste them. Try to do something with them that you and your mother think I would do. Recycle them back into the world for the world to use. After all, remember, we are only the custodians for a while, and what is one man's junk is another man's treasure. Okay, so here I go, enough of the preamble. If you are still with me, turn the page. Well, Christopher, one of my actions that I regret the most when I was a young man, sometime in the late 40s, I think I was entrusted with my grandfather's straight razor by means of his last will and testament. I carelessly misused it and broke it by trying to use it as a screwdriver. I found out later that my grandfather Holloman had specifically wanted me to have it because it had been very personal to him and he wanted me to have something of his that had been very personal to him. Something that he had used every day. Well, I still have that broken razor of his and I still carry the burden of carelessly with no concern breaking it. I knew that I would never use it to shave with, but it was my one personal bond with him, and I still feel like I betrayed his trust by carelessly and thoughtlessly misusing it and breaking it. Maybe that razor did have a purpose greater than anything my grandfather and I ever dreamed of. For it is because of my carelessness of my grandfather's razor that I am writing this open letter to you. I hope that you will not carelessly misuse, waste, or destroy the value of the many things I have collected for you. Do not be in such a hurry to use, play, or work with these things. First, learn all about them and how to use them and enjoy them, their value. 
and how you can thoughtlessly waste their value, then enjoy them as I have. For example, my very good stamp collection, or all the recorded popular music on cassette tape, VCR tapes, and recordings. The oil paintings, United Nations art graphics, first of the issue covers, first life covers, the complete set of very valuable wrong first day issues of the United Nations covers, the musical movies I've collected for you on VCR tapes, my books on popular music, movies, entertainers, musical theater, ship models, my day lilies, gazebo, and dreams. As a boy, my greatest dream was to have inherited things from my mother, father, grandparents, etc. But alas, they were poor, and we were poor. And the things that we had, they didn't stay around long. I'm a collector of things, even more than your mother, and as a boy, I always wished I had a stamp collection, or coin collection, or book collection, in a large old house from my grandparents. Well, I did end up with a few things, which you will get from me. I have the Chandler Family Bible from Grandfather and Grandmother Chandler. The graveyard plots from my Grandfather Chandler and Mother are buried in Silagog, Alabama. A few books from my stepmother, Holloman, and a few of my mother's sister's books. My father's picture album as a boy. My mother's picture album as a girl. My picture album as a boy. A box of assorted pictures. A box of my mother's things when she was a young girl, including a teddy bear she cut the hair off, thinking it would grow back. My baby clothes. All of my books, stamp collection, records, tapes, paintings, scout badges, trumpet, grandfather clock, my dreams for you, your mother, and other personal things. The things that are left from my parents' lives together and apart, except for the memories, which I will try to write down in a separate document called My Memoirs. My father had a second married life, much as I did, and just as you have half-brothers and half-sisters, I have a large number of half-brothers and sisters which live in Salem, North Carolina, where my father is buried. I have another notebook called This Is My Working Life, which you might find interesting as to how I spent the 42 years of the working part of my life, from high school graduation in 1945 to my retirement in 1987. I have the first and only scout handbook that belonged to my mother's half-brother, Dr. John James Holloman Jr. This book started me on the road to becoming an Eagle Scout and a Scoutmaster. More about this in my memoirs. You will get this book as well as all my scout books, scout badges, and my dreams for you as a Boy Scout. Eventually, in 1989, Bob turned their home's shed into a little workshop and had a plaque made that said, Dreaming Studio of Mr. C and Little C, where dreams do come true. In 1992, Chris claimed that he was abused by five teachers and the principal, where they allegedly pinned him to the ground and tape recorded his cries. Some of the teachers and principals of Nathaniel Green Elementary School that I was attending in last year, about uh, late 1980s, early 1990s, they abused me. They abused me by pinning me to the ground with uh, their, uh, with uh, holding my wrists and my ankles, pinning me down to the ground, and, and audio taping my cries and shouts. But anyway, my mother and my father... They both fought the court system, the Green County court system, which, uh, they were not very nice bunch of people, very not, hands down. But anyway, we eventually moved to Chesterfield County for a nice, better school system. Bob took that incident very seriously and took the school to court over it, where he eventually lost, having the case dismissed in 1994. After talks about Chris having to go to a special school from then on, Bob would actually homeschool Chris until he had another heart attack in 1992, leading Bob and Chris to move to Richmond, Virginia, so that way Chris could stay in a mainline schooling system while Barb stayed at 13 Branchland, or of course what Chris would call later, the Sonichu Temple. The rest of the 90s would be pretty tame for Bob, outside of his neighbors in the Richmond neighborhood starting rumors about him, and some guy called Jamie allegedly trying to get Bob put in jail in the late 90s. As Chris got older and was able to be by himself without constant supervision, Bob would enjoy his retirement starting the day at his local Burger King and then going home and listening to his records. 
Bob, at this point, had accumulated thousands of records in his private collection and would listen to them throughout the day. Even during Chris's love quest, Bob's life at this point was pretty peaceful. But then, in 2005, Chris Chan had a dream where the Grim Reaper told him just how much time Bob had left. I understand my dad does not have long to live, but I have to ask you while you're here, when will you be taking my father? He informed me that he would not claim his soul until the year 2015. Like I said, some things were going well until Chris drew the ire of some users on the forum called Something Awful, and all of a sudden, Bob's peaceful retirement wasn't that peaceful anymore. After Chris had managed to get blood in the water, trolls and weens alike would spam the Chandler household's phone line like their life depended on it, trying to get Chris, but often getting Bob instead. Hello? Hello? Why are you calling on me on a Sunday afternoon? I didn't call you. I'm just trying to go see. I wish you'd quit bothering my telephone. I'm trying to watch TV. I'm an 82-year-old man. Now, cut it out. But sometimes, Bob's quick wit would come through and he would dumb the weens like, you know, they were trees. And if he was like a lumberjack... July! 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 Hello? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Are you Bob Chandler? What the hell is that supposed to mean? That you're an idiot? It doesn't matter who I am. Who is this idiot I'm talking to on the other end? Um... Come August 2008, and Bob would write Chris another letter, this time one much shorter. Dear Christian, at this time in life, you and Sonichu need a quest and purpose in life. Let Sonichu become a champion for autistic persons everywhere, and continually defeat the perils of autism. Sonichu could become the spokesperson for autistic persons, with an ongoing fight for them in chapter after chapter, or good deeds on the internet. He could become the spokesperson from now on. You and Sonichu could become famous worldwide. By February 2009, the trolling was in full swing and Chris was online talking to what he believed was his online girlfriend Julie, but instead it was really the 13-year-old Blue Spike. Well, there are some old Chris Chan videos that are pretty memorable, and some are memorable enough that you don't even forget their titles. A few examples would be Julie Reveals Herself, Flying Elephants, and of course, the most frightening of all, For My Sweetest Ivy, something that the community at the time found a much better name for. But those all pale in comparison to the classic, Bob Walks In. On Valentine's Eve, while Christian and Julie were cybering on the family computer located in the kitchen, the telephone rang, and Christian said, Don't worry about that, my father will answer it. Unfortunately for Chris, his dad did end up answering the phone, and it was a troll on the other end. The troll told Bob that Chris was about to Minecraft himself downstairs, and Bob, an 82-year-old man, rushed downstairs to save his son. Unfortunately for Bob, he had arrived onto a site that he had done nothing in his life to deserve. Thankfully, however, Bob knew exactly how to handle the situation, and gave us the inspiring term, cutting it down. I'm getting all these crazy damn calls. What are you doing? Nothing. Give me that crap. Now, what's going on? Dad, will you get out of here? No, I will not. People tell me that you're about to kill yourself on YouTube. What? What are you doing? I'm not doing anything. I'm going to wake your mother up and find out? No. Well, then get out of here. off that internet. Fine. What is your trouble? I'm not going to kill myself. Get away from that TV. Fine. Get away from the internet. I'm cutting it down right now. No! Dad, no! Yes. No! What are you doing? Don't do it, Dad. I'm going to shut this thing right down. No. Yes. No. Dad, no. Stop. Go wake your mother up. Don't bother me. 
okay? Go wake your mother up. Don't bother me. Go and wake your mother up. You tell them what's going on. This thing is going to go down. Yeah. Yes. And from that point on, Bob would be given the title Internet Lumberjack from now and forever until the end of time. And with that title came a little something called respect. Walking on his son like that is bad, don't get me wrong, but Bob wasn't the first parent to get themselves into that situation. However, Bob might actually be the first parent in history to get a postcard in the mail of their naked 27-year-old son with a you-know-what kind of doll. One month later, and Chris would do a little house tour. Let's do some highlights, shall we? Here's a bathroom. I take my shower in here often. Uh, use some, I have some head and shoulders. Got some sink and commode. Got a card table there. That I uh, would sometimes set up when I want to play cards in my room or something or when I want to do some work. It's the kitchen. Well, I just decided to leave the tree up without the uh, star on top. Yeah, it's a bit of a mess. Uh, at least I got enough room to warm up a pizza, wash dishes, all that good stuff. Bare essentials. And this was the living room again before we cleared it up with so much mess. This would be the music room again before it got cluttered, but now my mom sleeps in here often. We're not getting a chill. I'm afraid I pissed her off a couple yep. times ago. Oh, that's not too difficult to do. Just oh, my family is a bunch of pack rats. Hmm. Downstairs bathroom. Not much going on in here. The uh, utility room with the uh, washer and dryer. The hallway laid out the tank. Door. This was the family room. Hi, Bob. What's you up to? Going to the city. Okay. Get on out of here. Okay. Well, Bob actually found out that Chris had shown off the state of their home and was not pleased, causing Chris to create one of the greatest videos that he's ever made, largely because once again, Bob walked in. This does not even deserve a captain's log introduction because this is dead serious. The inside and outside tour I did a few months ago of my house, everyone here today, my mother and my father are angry at me. They're blaming me. It's my fault. I admit, it. it's my fault. I want everything about my house off the internet. I'll send in detectives. I'll send in police. I'll send in everything in my power to get it off the Listen internet. Listen to me. Listen to me. Yes. Listen to me. Yes. Shut that goddamn thing off. I don't care what you do. You get all that stuff off of there, tonight. I'm working on it. Go work on it. I am working. Do you realize, do you realize something? Let me tell you, if the health department of Greene County sees those videos that you put on the damn internet, they could condemn our house and we would have to move out of it. So you go get that goddamn stuff off of there and fast. I'm working on it. I was making a YouTube a video for you to tell everybody to get the images off of the internet. It's, oh. it's, it's, not, it's out of my control. Oh, you get them off. It's out of my control. I don't know where to go. I don't know you where to go. You loaded them up there. You unload them. I'm working on it. Go do it. I am working. I am doing it. I'm sorry. Get in the hair and do it. I, I, I'll I be up all night with you if I have to. You won't get any sleep for that stuff off. Working on it. Get in there and start. I'm working on it. Let me do those stupid videos. So I can tell everybody at my command to get everything, help me get everything off the internet about our house. I don't want to 
get kicked out of my house by the health department. And what you just did was stick a knife in our back and kill us. All right, let me just get that stuff off of there. I'm working off of there fast. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. So yeah, please get everything off of the internet now, 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 now. Curse the trolls. Peace to everybody else. Well, come March 2010, and Bob would have another heart attack, bringing him to the hospital. Chris Chan would let people know about this on Twitter of all places. Captain's Log, Stardate, March 1st, 2010. My father went to the hospital last night at 3 a.m. with a case of congested heart failure. He will be back out in a couple of days, but I've had a long, stressful day. I only got four hours of sleep. I will resume daily updates later this week. Unfortunately, it turned out that Bob was as delusional as Chris and actually believed that the trolls were trying to ruin Chris's credit and rack up a ton of debt in his name. Even though there were a lot of trolls at the time and even now that I'm sure would love to do that, Chris was more than capable and willing of doing it himself with both a credit card and a PS triple. You know what they just did a week ago? They just broke into his checking account, got his checking account numbers and routing numbers. They, they broke into his Best Buy MasterCard number, and they stole his ID and, and all of his uh, password information. They went into that Best Buy checking account, trying to ruin his credit, and made a payoff on a check that had no funds in the checking account, which got him a whole bunch of, of, of non-sufficient fund fees. Now, this all transpired a week ago. Now, I'm not going to listen to your petty stuff, okay? You have people, including Mike, and I could tell you two more names, but I can't think of them right now, but the third one is Megan, and I'm sure you've heard of Megan or know Megan right there in the state. I've heard about Megan. Yeah, Sir, I well, don't understand They're the you're people that are terrorizing Christian. Getting into early 2011, and Chris would start to move into what's known as the Tom Girl Saga, Dressing like this, and apparently Bob was not pleased to say the least. And now, we've finally gotten to that point, what I truly believe is the darkest day in Christory. On September 6, 2011, just two days after Bob's 84th birthday, he once again had heart failure, and this time passed away permanently. This is what I truly believe was the darkest day in all of Christory. Bob for sure had his faults. But he did his best to look after both Chris and Barb, and now he was gone. Remember that dream that Chris was talking about earlier, where the Grim Reaper told him that Bob would die in 2015? Well, here's the full message. I could not get to sleep. My heavier cries from my father's passing is really hitting me bad. Suffice to say, I am feeling through multiple emotions. I, like my mother, cannot believe he is gone. In a dream I had years ago, the Grim Reaper made an appearance, and I asked him directly. I understand my dad does not have long to live, but I have to ask while you're here. When will you be taking my father? He informed me that he would not claim his soul until the year 2015, though I've known since before 2005 that Robert had a good number of years left. 2015! Damn you, Reaper! This is 2011! I was promised that we'd be blessed with Father's presence for four more years. I was promised. <sighs> Upon assuming his responsibilities of household finances, bill paying, and helping my mother, I started reading his payment plan binder, figured out his charter organization, and started okay with better informed mind. I have been emotionally comforting my mom to keep her straight as she is still feeling drunk like weird, lonely and sad. When I have my moment, I am able to share a smile with her. Currently, she is sleeping in comfort up in my room with a CD of big band romance tracks my Aunt Harriet offered to Robert for his 84th. At least now, I have finally confirmed that you, a shorter than me woman, can crash on my couch and I would take the bed without having feet hit me. I mean, I am uncertain my bed is wide enough for two. I'll check again later. Love you, Jackie. Chrissy. A month later in October and Bob's funeral was long over, with Chris and his half-brother David Allen attending, but Carol was allegedly a no-show. 
Chris was now the man of the house, and while the Chandler family was nowhere near a wealthy household, Bob, before his death, was able to save a small fortune that while we're not sure how much it was exactly, was in the tens of thousands of dollars. Combine that with Chris Chan's increased tugboat money because of a survivor's benefit and he was now making a whopping $15,600 American a year and Barb was making a total of $14,440 a year from her social security and pension. This combined was a pretty even 30 grand a year to live off of and while it's not ideal, it's enough to live a pretty comfortable life not having to worry about driving to and from work every day and especially if the mortgage is paid off, which it actually was until 2009 when the Chandler family remortgaged the house to pay off Barb's credit card debt. The mortgage in total was $9,600 a year, and once you add taxes coming off the tugboat money, that was at least a third of their money just gone. Still though, Bob had left them more than enough money to give a reasonable person some breathing room for a few years. But as you're probably well aware, Chris and Bob are not reasonable people, and they would almost immediately blow through all the money that Bob left them, not even on something cool. At 5.20 p.m. on October 28th, 2011, Chris went to a store called The Game Place that he was banned from after hearing that the manager, Michael Schneider, was no longer working there. Again, Chris had been banned since 2008, and things did not end up going very well for him after an incident that we're not really sure of what happened, but it ended with Chris hitting Michael Schneider with his car, and if that wasn't bad enough, him and Barb then switched seats where she hit him with the car too. Once the police got to the scene, Barb assaulted one of them. Bob spent years of his life trying to make sure that his loved ones would be looked after once he was gone, and as hard as he tried to make sure they would be okay, they had found a way to squander it all in minutes. Barb had the bright idea to hire a fairly expensive and well-known lawyer named Rob Bell and spent the entire inheritance on him defending the two of them. And at the end of the day, it didn't matter who they hired because they both pled guilty anyways. Michael Schneider actually requested that Chris didn't get a felony so long as the Chandlers paid for his medical bills, and this is how Chris responded in court. Do you understand that you are to pay Michael John Schneider for his medical expenses? Yes, but I don't think that thieving liar deserves a red cent. Without Bob, things would rapidly decline in both Chris and Barb's life. Remember how bad the house was before? Well, this is the same house, and you can hear even Chris say how bad it's gotten. What you just seen was the living room, that pretty much my mom and I are in. Uh, then, what's then what's blocked off the other side? Of the actually that was, actually that was the family room in its entirety, both halves, but their half, the second half was blocked. And then the bathroom down here, and pretty much the it's pretty much the utility room with laundry and back door, which that too is blocked. It's so freaking cluttered in here in this house. Yeah, <sighs> Mr. C, my father had to have narrow passageways, but they were not this narrow. Mm. Anyway, yeah, steps going up to the front door right there. And then um, more steps going up. Uh, kitchen, very much locked off all over. With the Resident Evo refrigerator right there. I use the term Resident Evo because in Japan, Resident Evil video game is called Biohazard. Yeah, the one that I cleaned recently. That's as much of the living room as you can see above two above this block, which essentially consists of two couches, hardly been used. Uh, but way through this narrow hallway, upstairs bathroom with Bathtub and shower pretty much hasn't changed since the earth since the trolls first saw it. <sighs> 
That was the last time that we would get to see 13 Branchland before the house fire in January 2014. Contrary to popular belief, it wasn't started by a Keurig machine, but instead an extension cord that was wedged between the bathroom door getting damaged every time someone opened and closed it. I'm no oracle, but something tells me that if Bob was around at this time, then this fire would have never happened, nor would things like the financial crisis. But what do I know, I'm just a guy on the internet that makes YouTube videos. And as much time as I've spent watching Chris Chan, there isn't anyone that can tell us what differences that butterfly effect would have caused, whether it's me or Null. Ultimately, that's just my opinion on what the darkest day in Christory was. Bob definitely had his problems, but overall he tried his best, and unfortunately for him, no amount of preparing could have helped both Barb and Chris when they were at the wheel. But what do you think? Was this the darkest day or just one of them? If you disagree, feel free to let me know why. As always, thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you soon. But wait, what's this?